So in today's video, I'm going to talk to you about cameras. Obviously, cameras are an essential part of any automotive content you want to create. And you can go out and blow the budget on a really expensive digital camera and the latest GoPro Hero 9 and probably get some fantastic footage. However, if you're like me, you're doing this as a bit of a hobby to start with and you're probably on a bit of a budget. So I'm going to share with you some of the lessons I've learned on how to get some pretty good footage without breaking the bank. So the first top tip is a smartphone. Most of us, pretty much all of us these days, have a smartphone. I have an iPhone 11 and this is more than adequate for probably 90% of the content I create. I've been using this for about 18 months now and it's great. I can record in 4K, I can do time lapse, it's got a really quite wide angle lens on it. It's brilliant for pretty much everything. In fact, I've been using this for recording most of the talking shop videos. Uh, obviously today I'm not because it's here, you're on a GoPro. But this isn't the only iPhone I use. So if you're like me, most of us have, kicking around in the kitchen cupboard, an old iPhone and probably an even older iPhone. Don't write these off. They might not have 4K cameras on them, but they're perfectly useful pieces of kit. By the way, if you're wondering what this is, uh, this is an adapter so you can wirelessly charge an earlier iPhone. So the two items I've got here is an iPhone 5C and uh, an iPhone 6. Uh, and these are old handsets uh, and I got them for next to nothing. You can buy these second hand, so these about £45 in grade A condition. Uh, these are about £80 to £100 in grade A condition and they're really useful B-reel cameras. So smartphones are great for doing things like time-lapse videos or just having an additional angle so you can see the, uh, the thing you're filming from a different perspective. Uh, I like to set these up, even if I only use, you know, 15, 20 seconds of the footage from them, just to have something a little bit different to look at. And for the price they cost, they really are great. Um, so you can have two or three camera angles for half the price of a new GoPro. So the beauty of these, as you'll see, I'm bought into the Apple ecosystem. It means that if I take footage on the iPhone 6 or the 5C, I can send everything to my primary device uh, and then I can actually edit it on this device if I need, or I can just upload them straight to the cloud um, so that when I get home, they're all on the computer behind me ready for editing. So being stuck to one ecosystem has its benefits and I've got three cameras that would literally fit in my pocket. Uh, I do also occasionally use my trusty old iPad. Again, the camera isn't great on this, but it's fine for time-lapse footage or just an extra shot on the workbench because it's got its own little stand built in. Quite a handy little thing. And I think most people have, you know, these sorts of electronic devices kicking around at home and probably not making the best use of the cameras that are on them. So. The iPhone is great for doing footage. You can walk around with it. You can stick it on a stand, on a tripod, on a mount, stick it to your window with a suction cup. That's great. But if you want to do something outside the car, they're not really ideal. They've got quite a large surface area because of the touchscreen, and that makes them really quite a wind trap. So you're never gonna get one to stay still on the outside of a car. They're also quite susceptible to moisture and damp. So no good if you're filming in bad weather. So that brings me on to action cameras. So you'll have seen in some of the other videos I've done for Talking Shop, uh, I mentioned this little fella. Um, it's a, a cheap £20 action camera that professes to be 1080p, which it really isn't. Uh, I used this as a dash cam for a short while. Um, and to be frank, it's 
it's rubbish. But it does have its use. Because it is cheap and cheerful, uh, I use this to test shots. So I'll, as you will see in the other videos, I've used it for trying the drive over shots first. I've also used it to test suction cups and various other mounts, which we'll come on to in another video. Um, just in case they fail, it falls off, it gets run over by another vehicle, I'm not going to be that concerned about it. And the reason is because a good quality action camera is not cheap. You very much get what you pay for with these little fellas. So that brings me neatly on to the GoPro. This is another ecosystem that you can buy into, and it is a wonderful ecosystem with lots of accessories to do pretty much anything you can think of with a camera. But I would recommend proceed with caution. You can go out and spend three to four hundred pounds on a new Hero 9 or one of the smaller sort of square session cameras and you'll get fabulous 4K footage, it'll be nice and stabilised and you'll probably get good sound quality. But that really is a budget buster. You don't need to spend four hundred pounds on an action camera just to get that outside shot or that exhaust shot or that bonnet camera shot. Actually, the best thing is some of the older ones and second hand ones. So I started with this, which is a GoPro Hero 3 Plus. This is a great little camera. It will do, I think it will do 1080p at a push. It might do 2.7K, but only at quite a low frame rate. Um, but it's a, you know, a fairly robust, hardy little fella. Uh, and these weigh in at about 80 pounds second hand and usually come with a plethora of accessories from mounts uh, to clamps and selfie sticks, etc. Uh, the problem I found with this is it is now quite an aged camera, uh, so you'll notice this one is quite thick because it's got an additional battery on the back. I had to get an additional battery to stop having to keep changing the batteries out while we were filming. But it's a useful piece of kit. The big downside is though, there's no screen on the back, so it's really difficult to know exactly what's going to be in shot. However, they are quite a wide angle lens, so you can pretty much get everything in shot. In fact, as you're watching this on my GoPro Hero 4, most of the shot has actually been trimmed away because it's such a wide angle it gets most of the room in and there's a lot of junk hiding off screen here and here. So this is a good cheap starting point but what I would highly recommend is the Hero 4. So the Hero 4 is what you're watching on now uh, and I have a second one here. The beauty of this platform is it's not too much more expensive than the Hero 3 um, so they're about 100 to 120 pounds second hand and again usually come with loads of accessories. Make sure you get a silver edition not a black edition. The black edition is much like the Hero 3. The silver edition comes with the all important touch screen on the back. So this allows you to do lots of settings very easily without faffing around with the little buttons to get into the settings uh, and reading the tiny little screen on the front. But it also allows you to frame your shot. Um, so you can see exactly what the GoPro is looking at uh, and get the perfect shot and get as much in as you really need. So for me, the Hero 4 is the pick of the crop. It's relatively cheap, there's loads of them around second hand, plenty of accessories, and it will record everything you're ever going to need. I rarely record anything higher than 1080p, especially for YouTube, but you can go all the way up to 4K at a reasonable frame rate with these without any problems. And the beauty of these, I think the 4 is the last generation that you can actually take apart. So I've had some problems with, I think it was this one, it might be the one that you're watching me on, where the little ribbon cable inside here came detached from the circuit board and the buttons didn't work, so I couldn't actually record with it. Uh, otherwise it was working fine. So I was able to take the whole thing apart, push the ribbon cable back onto the circuit board, reassemble it, and I've got a working camera again. So it's really nice to get some footage as you're driving along if you're doing some in-car filming. So I use just a cheap dash cam. So this is a, a 4K dash cam I bought off eBay. It was about £35, I think. Uh, word of warning, most of the sound quality on these proper dash cams is horrendous. This is all completely usable. It doesn't even sync the audio with the video, but it gives me much better video quality than some of the other dash cams I've tried. Um, so I usually have this attached to the windscreen when I'm doing a drive just because you get some nice extra footage uh, and it's useful to have a dash cam on anyway in case you have an accident there's any problems. The beauty of a dash cam is they come with a purpose-built really quite um, petite little suction cup and quite a robust one as well. I tend to find cheap suction cups are not very good but I'll do a whole other video on those.
The um. <laughs> oh, just falling off again. Yeah. How bizarre. It came straight. Oh, it wasn't even when I was accelerating fast. Um. So this is a neat little setup, but you do have to have. Uh, a 12 volt plug-in for it to actually operate. This doesn't have a, a decent battery and it lasts for about 10 seconds on its internal battery. Okay, so the last thing I have in my arsenal is this little fella. I think they technically call it a spy camera because it's so blinking small. Uh, I bought this on a bit of a whim just to have a play with and I haven't had a chance to experiment yet, but when I do, I will do a little video on it. Um, the theory being, because it's so small, you could stick it in a variety of places where you might not get away with a full-size camera. I'm thinking kind of on the dashboard in front of the driver so you don't obscure their view of the road but you can get a you know a full front view of them. Uh, it also apparently does night mode and it does um, sort of a motion triggered recording as well. Um, so we'll see if we can get it to work but it's only got two buttons to control all of those features so I suspect it's going to be a real pain in the ass. Um, but yeah that's my collection of cameras. So to summarise my two top tips are Get yourself uh, a decent smartphone because I mean, we all use these all day, every day anyway, so it might as well be a multi-purpose device to record your content. And get yourself a Hero 4 Silver Edition, not the Black Edition because you need the screen on the back in reality. Uh, and the GoPro 4 comes with all the accessories you could possibly ever need for doing any sort of content creation. So these are a great robust little piece of kit. And that should be all you need to get started. Obviously, you can go and spend a lot more money on fancy kit as and when you get going, but you can learn your craft with these cheap pieces of kit on a budget and have a bit of fun. So I hope you found that useful. Uh, and if you did, do please like and subscribe and keep your eyes peeled for other Talking Shop videos. See you next time.